Are you ready for part two of building a bastard hip? These bastard hips are not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. But like with anything in life, if you take it step by step, you can wrap your mind around it and get it done. All right, we're gonna pick back up from part one of the video where we're giving a step-by-step -step explanation of how to cut this hip rafter. All right, we're gonna jam this thing up right to the corner of the ridge there. And you'll see that the backing angles here on the hip plane out right at the ridge. The backing angle on this side planes out beautifully with our A12 rafter on this side. And the angle here planes out with the 12-12 rafter on this side. And we see that our bird's mouth point here hits dead on our mark with our six inch offset. And the double cheek cut here at the end of the hip tail aligns perfectly with our overhangs on each side. You know, it's amazing when you get these accurate angles and dimensions out of Roof Ramers Bible, just how perfectly these things will fit. And we're gonna show you that in just a second and also give you all the steps we took to lay out and cut this hip rafter. Okay, to show you how well these things fit, we can look eyeball right down the end of the tails and you see how perfectly, perfectly they align. Okay, we're gonna lay out and cut this hip rafter. We wanna go to page 138 of Roof Ramers Bible and this is for the 812-1212 pitch combination. So for our hip information, we'll go down here to the bottom of the page and it, it gives everything we need. So just like we just showed you, it gives you the hip offset from the corner of the wall for the different overhangs. So for a 12 inch overhang, we got a six inch offset. And it would also give you a valley offset if you had a valley. So you wanna note that the larger the overhang, the greater the offset and it gives you the hip offsets for all these standard overhangs here. And if you've got an oddball overhang width, there's formulas in the book that will allow you to calculate that. It also gives you the other hip information. You got the hip backing bevel, both for 812 side and 1212 side, and the cheek cuts and the hip angles, etc. Now, one of the most important pieces of information is the pitch of the hip rafter. And for this pitch combination, it's nine and three eighths, 17. Now, you may remember on a regular hip that the hip pitch is always the, the roof pitch over 17. So if you had an 812 regular hip, the hip pitch would be an 817. But those conventions no longer apply on an irregular hip. So Roof Framers Bible will give the exact calculated pitch of the hip rafter for 68 different combinations of pit roof pitches. So, and that's what we've got here for this combo. Now, it also gives you all your jack rafter deductions and so forth. We'll show you that a little bit later. But this is all we need to begin to lay out and cut our hip rafter. Okay, now that we know that our hip rafter pitch is 9 and 3 8 17, we can mark the plumb cut of our hip rafter. So we'll align 9 and 3 8 with the top edge of the rafter and 17 with the top of the edge of the rafter here. And go ahead and mark the plumb cut of our hip rafter. Okay, the next step of cutting this uh, irregular pitch hip is to cut our cheek cuts here at the ridge. Okay, here we have the drawing, and this is detailing the cheek cuts for a hip or valley rafter on an irregular pitched hip roof. In this case, it's the 812 and 1212. Now, as you remember, for any uh, irregular hip, the hip and valleys do not run on a 45 degree angle. So these are going to be some uh, oddball angles whenever you have a uh, irregular hip. So for on this particular one, we've got an 812 and 1212. So on the 812 side, this cheek cut that goes on the very end of the hipper valley up at the ridge is going to be a long angled cut. So horizontally measured back from the plum cut, it's going to be an inch and an eighth cheek cut. And um, the bevel will be a 56 degree angle. Uh, over on the 1212 side, which indicated here, that horizontal cheek cut will be one half inch, and it'll be beveled at 34 degrees from the center line out. We, of course, are illustrating dimensional lumber at an inch and a half thick, so the center line is at three quarters of an inch. So this is tip of the hip rafter that would jam right up into the ridge, you know, the corner between the king common, you know, the, the 1212 king common would be along this bevel and the last 812 common rafter would be along this bevel. So since this hip is skewed around off 45, that necessitates these funky cheek cuts on the end of the hip rafter. So here on the 812 side of it, the cheek cut is gonna be an inch and an eighth. So we just come back perpendicular from that plumb cut, and we mark it an inch and an eighth. All right, so all we do there now, we use our same hip pitch, which was a nine and three eighths, 
17. We line that up here accurately on the square here. And we mark our cheek cut right here like that. All right, we've got the cheek cut marked here, but we, now we need to mark the center of this hip. So we'll just grab this along here like that. And we need that cheek cut to go from here to here. Now, that's steeper than I can cut uh, with a skill saw because it's a 56 degree angle. We can't make that sharp angle. So in lieu of that, we can set our saw on the complement angle, which would be 34 degrees, and actually set the saw here flat on this surface, and then we can make that cut. Now you can see we've got that cheek cut on that side. So now we want to cut the 12-12 side, so we can just flip it over to cut that one. Now on this side, the cheek cut is one half inch. So we'll pull again perpendicular from that cheek cut, and we'll mark one half inch. Okay, same thing. We're going to do the nine and three eighths, 17. I'm going to line that up with our half inch mark, like so, and mark our other cheek cut. So, so you can see our cheek cuts are not the same. They're a regular cheek cut, but we've got 90 degrees from this surface to this surface, 56 degree angle here, 34 degree angle here. Now we're ready to pull our hip length. So we want to hook the long point of our double cheek cut there and pull down here, mark our hip rafter length. This is the end of our hip tail and we're a hip pitch, so it's a nine and three eighths, 17. So from, from the end of our tail, we want our line Nine and three eighths over there, 17 over here, and mark the plumb cut. Okay, this is the end of our hip tail, and we need to bob it off for our flat soffit. So we're going to throw the square up on here, aligning it with our plumb cut. We're going to slide it up along there until we have four inches to the top of the rafter. And then we'll mark the level cut. To get our hip rafter tail length, we need to go to our factor chart right here. So if we go down to the 12-12 rafter run, which the hip is going to cross the wall on the 12-12 side, so we'll use it. 12-12 rafter run is 12 inch overhang times 2.062, and that will give our hip valley rafter length, which is the length of our tail. So we'll simply pull up from the end of our rafter tail to find the hap where it crosses the wall. Now we'll pull up from the end of our rafter tail here, 24 and three quarters, that was the 12 inch overhang on the 12 12 side. So, straight along the top of the hip grafter, the tail, and this would be our hat where it crosses the wall, the 24 and three quarters. Now, let's put a plumb cut on that. So, we're going to go nine and three eighths and 17. If we can align our square here, try to get it really accurate with our mark. And we can mark our plumb cut at the hat. Now, if we're going to mark the bird's mouth for our hip tail, and we're working from the end of the tail, we have to recognize that it is determined by the height of the bird's mouth on the 812 common rafter side. So here's the tail of our 812 common rafter. So what we want to determine is how far above this fascia point here is the level cut of our bird's mouth. So to do that, we'll just throw our framing square on here, and this is the 812 common. So 12 here, 8 up here, and coming up here, we can see that this level cut is 3 and 3 quarters of an inch higher than the fascia point at the end of our tail. And that's what we need to mark our hip bird's mouth. Okay, let's lay out our bird's mouth on the hip tail. So we'll simply lay our framing square on here. It'll align it with this plumb, plumb mark at our hap, and align with the fascia point at the end of our rafter tail. Now we recall that the common rafter, it was three and three quarter inches higher than the fascia point to the bird's mouth. But since the hip rafter is crossing on the 12-12 side where we built up the plate, we need an extra three inches. We had two plates of three inches. So we're gonna add three inches to the three and three quarter and we'll go to six and three quarter and mark it here. And that will be the height of the level cut of our bird's mouth for the hip rafter.
All we got to do now is to align the square with this plum cut right here and mark the level cut of the bird's mouth. And there is our hip rafter bird's mouth. And now we need to cut the double cheek cut on the end of the hip rafter tail. And you remember that on the 812 side, it was a 1 and 1 8 inch. So we pull back just the same as we did on the other one. We're going to pull back 8 and an 8, make a plumb line, mark the center of the hip right here, and we'll mark those cheek cuts that way. We've already shown you that. We won't go over it again. But it's worth noting that the the long miter will alternate on each side of this. So in other words, up on the ridge end of this hip, it would be on one side and it'd be on the opposite over here, which we see right here. We're going to pull that inch and an eighth for that cheek cut. So now you can see that that steeper miter here on the left side of the rafter, the shallower one on this side, 90 degrees from here to here. Those are that double cheek cut on the end of our hip rafter tail. Okay, as we place the, the hip rafter into position, we want to get that right in line there. You'll see that the center of the hip rafter will intersect right on the corner of the ridge, but the shoulders of the hip on each side are sticking up high above the plane of the 12-12 common on this side and the 8-12 common on this side. So we'll have to back the hip. We'll have to put bevels on each side of the hip. And since the 12-12 is steeper, this backing angle will be a steeper angle and then it'll be a, a lower angle on the 812 side. But the center will intersect right to the ridge. We'll show you how that works in just a second. So here is a drawing to illustrate the backing bevels that need to be placed on the top edge of the hip rafter. As you can see, this corner, which is protruding higher above the roof planes on either side, is ripped off on a bevel. And that's so the top of these jack rafters will plane out right with the edge of that bevel cut, and everything will plane out to the to the center of the hip right here and intersect right at the corner of the ridge. Here we have a drawing and this is showing a cross section of the hip rafter for an 812, here's an 812 side and a 1212 side, irregular pitch hip. And you might recall from our earlier section on, on a regular hip, you have an option of either backing the top of the hip, which is indicated by these bevels, or cutting the bird's mouth out by the amount of the hip drop and, and letting it drop down. So this what would be the square shoulder of the hip drops down so that it planes out uh, for the jack rafters. However, for a, a bastard hip or a regular hip roof, um, it's not quite so easy because the hip drop is different on one side to the other. So in this case, our hip drop would be a quarter inch on the 812 side, but on the 1212 side, it would have a 5 eighths inch hip drop. So there's really no way you could do an average of the two and drop the hip down, you know, say maybe from right here over to right here. It still would be off, you know, maybe a quarter to three eighths on the 12 12 side. But if you want it done accurately, uh, your only option would be to go ahead and back the top of the hip. So the, the 8 12 side would be beveled on an 18 degree angle. The 12 12 side would be beveled at a 36 degree angle. And this would, of course, be all the way down the top edge of the hip rafter so that it would plane out with the slopes on either side. Okay, now when we place the hip rafter into position like this, you can see that the center of the hip, the point of these backing bevels, planes out right to the corner of the ridge, and the backing angles will plane out with the 12-12 common rafter on this side, and also with the 8-12 common rafter on the other side. But the little spine or rib the center of this hip planes out right to the corner of the ridge. Okay, here's a close-up, and you can see how that backing bevel planes out smoothly to the 812 on one side and the 1212 on the other. Okay, here we're going to show you how for the low pitch side, in this case it's an 812 common rafter, to get our first jack rafter dimension, we're going to use this full common rafter length. That's from the square common. And we're going to take the first jack deduction. Now, on all of the irregular pitch hips in Roof Framers Bible, 
it will always give you this first jack as a short point dimension. You say, well, why in the world would you do that? I, I like the long point. Well, on a regular hip roof, absolutely. Because you can hook your tape on that long point. But here, we always give it as a short point. Just for this first jack. And the reason is, these angles are so sharp. This particular one is 56 degree angles. And you just can't cut that long miter. So by giving it as a short point, it gives you the option of cutting it on a 45 and just letting it have a little gap in the other side. Some people do that. Or if you want it to fit tightly, there's another way of doing it. But that's why in Roof Ramer's Bible, it will always have the first jack deduction from the common to the short point of the first jack. Okay, let's talk about how we get our jack rafter lengths. So we're here on page 138 of Roof Ramer's Bible. Again, this is for the 812-1212 combination. And it gives us all the information we need right here for our jack rafter lengths. So if we're starting from the end of our uh, common rafter, which of course is square on the end, we're gonna deduct 30 and a half inches and that will give us the short point of the first 812 jack rafter. Now for all the jacks thereafter, we'll use the 28.84 inches and we round that to the nearest eighths to be 28 and 7 eighths. So we would continue to subtract that to get the rest of our jacks. Now, if we have a long hip and a big string of jacks, we always want to use this decimal number because use of the rounded number would result in a cumulative error by the time you got down to the other end of the jacks. Um, and same thing here for the 1212, the first jack deduction 16 and 3 eighths to the short point. All the jacks thereafter, 15.08 inches. Uh, it also gives all the 24 inch on center spacings as well. And then lastly down here, let me point out this, the, it gives you the jack rafter length per inch of layout for both the 812 and the 1212 sides. And what that means is for, if you're measuring along the line of the layout, along the ridge or along the plate line, for every one inch you move on that layout, your jack rafter length will change 1.803 inches on the 812 side. And we'll show you how we use that in just a second. But it's used to change a short point to a long point or to alter the jack rafter lengths for a non-standard layout, uh, say when you're crossing the end of the ridge. So we'll look at that a little more in just a second. Okay, here's a close-up view to illustrate why the first jack deduction is different than the jack difference. Now, as you can see here, the center of this hip is always gonna run right up here to the corner of the ridge. But the side of the hip right here, if we projected a line up here, you see that it's not intersecting uh, with the common. So since we're going from the square ended common, it's gonna be a different deduction to get to the first jack than if we were going to this point up here. So Roof Ramer's Bible will give you that first jack deduction, and that goes from the actual common rafter length here down to your first jack. Now, on a, on a standard hip, it gives it to you to the long point. On the dual pitch, irregular hips, it's always going to give you a short point, and we'll explain more why in a minute. But the first jack deduction gets you from the square end common down here to the first jack. And then for all the rest of the jacks, you'll use the jack difference. To, to get all of their lengths. Now, people don't realize it, but they're using Construction Master and they're typically there putting their common run here to the side of the ridge. And so Construction Master is giving them the correct length for this common rafter. However, when they then hit the jack key, it's giving them a value that is not the correct length of the first jack. Since the Construction Master is actually doing it on the standard jack difference as if it were going to this point up here. And so since their first jack is the wrong length and all the rest of their jacks are based off of that, that means all their jacks are the wrong length. And so people do it all the time and don't even realize it. Of course, you know, it does affect things. The jacks are running out of square because they're the wrong length. And uh, it can affect the uh, breaking of your decking, your little rafter tails, especially down on your short jacks will be skewed out of square. And um, so they're fighting that and they don't realize the origin of it is the way that Construction Master gives a jack uh, calculation. But since Roof Ramer's Bible makes allowance for that and gives you the first jack deduction from the square common and then a jack difference from all the rest of them, 
they fit beautifully. It's just amazing how well everything works out when you've got the true and correct lengths for everything. This is the 812 jack we were looking at. So, you know, this is an 812 plumb cut on the top end of our jack rafter. This is the top side of it. And this point right here would be our short point that we get from Roof Ramer's Bible. And so this is the angle we need to scoot right along here. But we just can't cut that long. There's no way to cut that with a standard skill saw. So in order to make this easier, what we'll do is we'll go up one inch along here, one inch. And Roof Ramer's Bible gives us a rafter length per inch of layout. So when we go in our book, you'll see that that gives us how much we need to add from the short point to here for one inch of layout. So we're going we're gonna to move that up. And then we'll cut this off square. I mean, still on, still on a plumb cut, but square on the end. That way we can flip our saw around on the end of it and cut this uh, angle. From our short point for the jack rafter, we are going to go up 1 and 13 sixteenths. And that is the length of this along the top of the jack rafter for one inch of the thickness of the jack rafter. So by getting that point, then we're going to cut it. And this part, of the jack rafter will be square and we're going to cut on this angle but that is a manageable cut for our skill saw so we'll show you how to do that okay this is our extension line we're going to put a plumb cut on it so we're going to go 812 and mark our plumb cut okay here you can see the side of this jack rafter this was our short point dimension and coming up that uh, calculated length of 1 and 13 sixteenths for one inch of our layout. It now puts us here on the top square cut. So we can describe that line straight down and now our skill saw can set right on top of this and it'll be able to cut that. It'll be a 34 degrees on the saw but a 56 degrees along the jack rafter and that'll make a miter that we can have fit on the hip. So now you can see that angle that we can fit on the hip rafter. Okay, here's the top of our jack. So you can see it fits beautifully on our hip. And by putting this as a small square cut, then the length of this cut is something that's capable of being cut with a skill saw. So that's why we give it as a short point dimension on your first jack. Now, of course, if you wanted to continue to do this, whatever this rafter dimension was to here. You just do the standard jack difference deduction. But from the common to the first jack, we're going to go to the short point each time. Okay, I want to talk about uh, making alterations to the lengths of your jack rafters to make allowances for differences in your common rafter layout. Now, this drawing is actually in Roof Ramer's Bible for the regular hip section. And so, uh, don't let that confuse you, but we can use it uh, to illustrate the same principles for an irregular pitch or dual pitch hip roof. Now, you know, it's common practice for framers to put a common rafter right at the end of the ridge, like on this side right here. And uh, using the first jack deduction and the jack difference, uh, you can get these jack lengths and they will be matched sets. In other words, this jack rafter will be the exact same length as this jack rafter. And some people see real value in that, and they want the same exact jack length from this end of the house over here to this other end. Now, of course, if they do that, if they put a common here right on the end of the ridge, that's going to put their jack rafter down here. But it's going to make it where their decking does not break when it crosses the end of the ridge, because these are now laid out from the end of the ridge, not from this end of the ridge. So with the irregular pitch, um, they're not going to be opposing each other on each side of the hip rafter anyway because it's a regular pitch hip. So there's really not a lot of value in doing that. So most people are going to want to keep their uh, common rafter layout the same going from right here. So if you pull your common rafter from there, 16 on center, your last common is going to end up right here in, in our drawing here, 6 inches back from the end of the ridge. So if your first jack deduction... From Roof Ramer's Bible gives you the jack right here, which is 16 inch center from the one at the end of the ridge. 
and we really want to put the jack rafter right here, then we need to make a uh, adjustment to our jack rafter length. And it's very easy to do because if it's six inches from where we jack, we want the jack to be from where the first jack deduction puts you, all we have to do is take this six inches and multiply it by that jack rafter length per inch of layout. And, uh, and then that will give us the amount that this jack is longer than this jack. And we'll put us up here at the correct first jack length. Then of course from there we just use the standard jack difference to get all the rest of these jacks. So you do it that way, your decking is going to break across all of the rafters and uh, everything will fit beautifully. So just, just a note to how to use that jack rafter length per inch of layout uh, to alter the lengths of these jacks. Of course this value here is for the regular 812 hip. But for all 68 combinations of uh, irregular hips given in Roof Framers Bible, it gives that for uh, each of the pitches of the combination. So real easy to, to change our jack rafter lengths. And, and if you wanted to change from a short point to a long point on a jack rafter, it's very easy to do. Just multiply this jack rafter length per inch of layout by inch and a half. So, you know, it's, it's along the layout. So you go inch and a half thickness and you change it from a short point to a long point. So, a handy tool to have. All right, we finished all the jack rafters. We're ready to deck this roof. Now, when we're gonna cut our sheathing to match the angle of this hip right here, we can call up to a member of our crew to give us a short point and a long point dimension so we can cut the right angle. Or we can do it the easy way. We can get the sheathing cuts out of Roof Framers Bible. Now, of course, with any uh, irregular pitch hip, the sheathing cuts on the 12-12 side here are going to be completely different from those on the 8-12 side. But the good news is that Roof Framers Bible has those exact sheathing cuts calculated for all the different pitch combinations. So when we go to throw our sheet up on a sawhorse, we can just simply take the long to short dimension from Roof Framers Bible and we can cut that angle. and It'll fit perfectly the first time. But sometimes we don't have a square corner, the end of a sheet, to pull from. Let's say you've got a, a hip line like this and it's turning the corner of the building and it very quickly runs into a valley. There is no square corner to pull from. But no worries with Reframers Bible because in addition to the long to short point on a full sheet, it gives the framing square cuts. So even if you're working with a little small piece of decking, you can throw the framing square on there and get a very accurate sheathing cut that'll fit perfectly the first time. So very quick and easy to do with the sheathing cuts out of Reframers Bible. Here's the drawing from Roof Framers Bible that explains roof sheathing cuts. Now this drawing is for the 812 regular pitch hip that's in the directions of Roof Framers Bible. So these numbers will be different on the irregular bastard hip that we're doing today, but the principles are all the same. The roof sheathing cuts are always given as a long to short point dimension on a 4 by 8 sheet and also as a framing square cut as is illustrated here. Either method will give you a very accurate angle that will fit your hips and valleys. So no need for a bunch of field measurements. You simply can use these roof sheathing cuts to very quickly and accurately sheathe your roof. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, for the sheathing cuts out of Roof Framers Bible. Now this again is for the 812-12-12 pitch combination. And we see all the information is right here. So for the 812 side of the roof, we can use 26 and 5 eighths. That's long to short on a 4 by 8 sheet. Or we can use the framing square cuts, which is 6 and 5 eighths to 12. Same thing for the 12-12 side of the roof. We can use 50 and 7 eighths, long to short on a 4 by 8 sheet. Or framing square cuts, 12 and 3 quarter and 12. Either one will give you this quick and accurate angle to cut your roof sheeting. Okay, we're done. That completes this bastard hip. And by now... I'm sure you understand why they call them that. So clearly a, an irregular hip is 10 times harder to build, uh, at least in the beginning, than someone doing a regular hip where everything's on a 45 and standard angles and all the rest of it. But with Roof Framers Bible, because it gives you all the information you need, you know, every hip offset, every jack rafter length, every miter, every angle, uh, you can really do these things pretty quickly. And it really sets you apart from the competition that struggles so hard to wrap their heads around these things. So Roof Framers Bible, because it gives you all that information, 
take the head scratching out of it. You know, it's a little more work. You got to build up plates and do other things. But when you know what you're doing and you got the information right at your fingertips, you can knock these out really very quickly because bastard roofs are not going anywhere. Architects are going to continue to draw them and now you can frame them efficiently.